Chris, we got you here. I got to get a recruiting update out of you. Well, we did really good this past weekend. Um, we had, and, and also going into this week, we've done really well. So far, we've had uh, 15 of the top 15 offensive linemen on campus, and I have to put that out there. The top 15 offensive linemen have been on campus in the past eight days, if I'm including today. So in the past eight days, we've had 15 top offensive linemen. Uh, if you go look at uh, defensive line, uh, which is mostly the tackles, um, We've had a lot of, we've had a lot of really good defensive tackles on campus. The best part of this is how you know that Florida State's in the run for any of these guys is that they immediately set up an official visit. Every one of these guys, um, except for two, and I'm talking about everybody that showed up, everyone except for two have set up an official visit at Florida State. Um, to see Buchanan, which is an offensive lineman that was set to be at the University of Florida for an official visit, he cancels that visit and comes on an unofficial to Florida State. That that speaks volume of what recruiting looks like at the offensive line position right now, whereas a lot of fans are worried about it. Um, I'm not just based off of what's been coming in. Uh, you're also in the running for two of the best running backs in this class with Alvin Henderson um, and I think the other one's Lewis if I'm not mistaken. I don't know how to say his last name if I'm wrong, but two of the top Running backs in the in the in the class has been the Florida State. Both have said an official visit. Um, you've got Tremel Jones has came back tremendous uh, amount of times now. Uh, that's your twenty twenty five commit for the quarterback position, who plays over there with James uh, Coleman as he is the running backs coach, but he still that's who he plays with. Um, I don't think that people realize how good we are at DB and and how much hype's around it. Uh, we did really well in the you know the class before this one, uh, but there was a lot of playmakers that showed up defensively, um, as well as offensively, uh, this past eight days, um, including today was was actually a pretty big one, which was surprising to me, uh, because it's a Wednesday and that many kids showed up, and uh, they all set an official visit today except for one of the guys, and he still has time to do so. It's just. We're worried about recruiting um, at some portion of our fan base because they want to see linebackers recruited better. This is the best I've seen our uh, staff recruit linebackers to this point. Now, recruiting them and landing them, you know, landing them is part of recruiting. We haven't landed them yet, but when kids are coming in and they're actually excited about what they saw, they're having the conversations, uh, they're wanting to set official visits right away, all that bodes well for what recruiting is set up for anyway. So, uh, and, and here, and it's a little bit different. If everybody goes and listens to these top recruits, when they talk about, you know, what was your visit like at Florida State? Oh, man, this thing that they were doing in practice, or, hey, uh, what coach so-and-so said, it hit me different. And, you know, this is like one of my top schools now. And, and there's just so many different things that they're saying. That last year, we were we got a lot of guys on campus, but they weren't talking necessarily like they were excited to see Florida State or they were excited about this particular thing at the visit. It was like almost coach talk for recruits. So it was just genuine cliches that were being given out. Oh, yeah, Florida State's good. I, I liked it. It was it was fun. It was this. that. That's what they were saying last year. Now this year they're pinpointing things that they really – that really intrigued them to want to set up an official visit or want to stick around the campus an extra day. Because multiple uh, recruits did that. They stuck around an extra day. Um, and that also bodes very well for what you're trying to do in recruiting. So I think everybody that's Florida State fan should not be worried about the 2025 class. I said it last year. I'll say it again. The 2025 class may not have all of the wide receivers and DBs and the the you know the offensive playmakers that, that we got this past uh, recruiting cycle in 24, but this one's going to have a lot of big men and a lot of depth pieces that we need at linebacker, at defensive tackle, at defensive end, at offensive line. Um, that's You're going after particular position groups 
this year versus what you had to go after last year. So I'm very impressed with what Coach Atkins and Randy Shannon and Ernie Sims that has not been mentioned as a full-timer yet, um, but what they're doing as far as recruiting goes. Um, I'm also very impressed with what Tony Tokarts keeps doing with, uh, I'm assuming that him and, uh, uh, now I'm forgetting the kid's name, Tramiel, I'm sure that they're starting to have, begin to have a good relationship. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for what we actually land. And I think everybody needs to chill as far as what we've got landed. It's, it's still March. I know it's almost the end of March, but we're still in March. Everybody needs to chill out. I believe your guy's Byron Lewis, the running back out of American Heritage High School in Fort Lauderdale. That's him. I knew his last name was Lewis. I, I knew I was right. <laughs> All right, Chris, what's going on at uh, Spear Addicts these days? Um, well, the show has been great. Uh, the, the breakdown show that we just did uh, Monday night, uh, me and uh, James were talking about, you know, which room we were worried about the most as far as that might need some help out of the portal or might need to see some guys step up. Um, mine started off with the defensive tackle room just based off of not having enough depth. Love what's at the top of the list. Uh, we took that all the way down, uh, you know, to every position group except for special teams. I don't break special teams down like that because the majority of our special teams is returning. I mean, majority of that's your kicker. So uh, no offense to anybody else that plays on special teams, but that's what it is. Um, and with Fitzgerald coming back, I don't have much to say about special teams, but we went in order as, you know, which which room we were worried about the most. And once it was it was great. Because once we got to the offensive line room, um, you had four more rooms after that 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 was really hard to critique. It was really hard to say that it wasn't more talent or it wasn't enough depth or or so on and so on. Um, Enough returning pieces like Shaheem Brown at safety, uh, like Conrad Hussey uh, going into his second year as the other safety. There was just there was a really good conversation and a great breakdown uh, that we did this past Monday. Uh, tomorrow night's uh, show, as long as one or two things break um, early tomorrow morning, even up to 11 o'clock in the morning from what I was told, those things break. We'll have a great show because there's a lot to talk about on that topic of what's coming out. So we'll see. If that doesn't come out, I have to change what we're talking about. But uh, that's usually how media goes. you you got to go with what news is out there and uh, unless you're going to break something. Um, I'm not too fond of breaking news because they don't usually want you to. So I don't, um, but I'm really excited for Monday, uh, Mondays and Thursdays at 8 PM. Uh, we haven't missed an episode and I don't know if we have yet. I, not to my knowledge. I think we've, we've only pushed one episode to a Tuesday that was a Monday night show. So very excited to keep that going. Um, and really excited for, uh, getting James on there as much as, as, as he comes on um, Thursday. He's going to be a little bit late, I think, is what he said. Um, but yeah. he'll be on there. Uh, and it actually bears well because I get to get all my crap off the top of my chest before he jumps in. Worked out great for uh, Monday night show, or it might have been Thursday before. But we're just doing what we can to, to keep everybody informed the correct way, the best of our ability, and not feed them a bunch of clickbait because that's I see a lot of that coming around because right now there's not a whole whole lot to talk about other than two or three spring practices. Um, that's what everybody else is talking about. So they put out a bunch of clickbait. We get a strange situation with this live stream. So I apologize everyone. I don't know what the deal is exactly because uh, we started on private. I switched it over after a couple minutes because I saw nobody's watching us. Uh, we've got about <laughs> 70 some people watching us. Uh, and have been since near the start of the show, but for whatever reason, maybe can't comment because we've gotten no comments. So anyway, I don't know what happened there because they're always defaulted to live. YouTube has been funky here the past couple yeah, of days. Be. So. I've, I've done one or two of these or 10,000. <laughs> so so uh, I don't know why this one turned out this way, but we, we've had people jump on and watch, but uh, they just can't comment. Apparently there's plenty of comments. We just not see them. Oh, okay. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Uh, okay. So the renegade report, what's going on there, George? Uh, same as usual Tuesdays and Fridays, 
7 Eastern, and then Sunday, sometimes around noon to 3 p.m. Uh, we've been talking case, 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 waiting on, uh, you know, the ruling as the judge is set to rule on that case in North Carolina on the motion to dismiss uh, and the motion to seal. So waiting on that. We did a, our last show. We just kind of talked about the defense because we had already been over the offense the previous week. Uh, just talking spring football and, and the cases mostly. I do want to use my time here to, to say one thing about what Chris touched on there earlier about the recruiting strategy and how it's not going to have necessarily all the flashy wide receivers and this and that, uh, but it's going to be beef. Uh, that's kind of a product of the portal and what I was talking about, how Norvell and, and Ray, like kind of 15, 20 people leave, you bring 15, 20 people out of the portal. Year after year, you're constantly only getting people that are part of the program. They're able and I know some people out there don't like to hear to hear this conversation, but they're able to fine tune their resources and exactly who they want to go after um, by what the roster needs. So if they need to go all offensive line and defensive line last one year or get six defensive backs one year, that's what they're going to do. Uh, and I just love the staff for it, whether the staff, the, the class ends up being top three or not. Uh, it's a beautiful day in Noel Nation. So come see us at the Renegade Report.